I had spoken to a few places of where I wanted to go to school and someone said um, rather without even thinking that I you know maybe should consider a different field um, and that's what inspired me to go into engineering was to actually prove somebody wrong um, that I could go into engineering. I wanted to prove people wrong who thought that as someone who was born a female I couldn't pursue certain things or do certain things. I'm uh, the first person in my family to go to university and get a bachelor's degree which is pretty cool. I don't have any other engineers in my family although now my little brother is in engineering so I get to lead the way for my family. Even just thinking about binary genders, you know, there's so much more diversity beyond uh, a male, female. And um, I think we have to be careful that we're not, we always have to look to the margins and who are we, who are we leaving out? Who are we forgetting about? And how can we really bring those people in and, and give them the space, right? So I am a civil engineer by training. I, so I'm a non-Indigenous uh, white settler researcher. But most of my work is with Indigenous people, mostly with First Nations working on issues of sustainable infrastructure and recognizing that uh, engineering, though one of the tools, is not the only tool. So we really look at non-traditional approaches and solutions to inherently technical engineering problems. So uh, my grandpa's a 60s scoop survivor from Saw Ridge Creek First Nation in Northern Alberta. And growing up, I didn't really identify much with the culture, the identity, I didn't really know what it was about and a lot of that is a direct result of co colonization and uh, when I came to engineering and I saw the many ways our profession has really failed indigenous communities um, it really was important to me to kind of recognize my place as an indigenous person as an engineer and kind of look towards how I could make the most of the privileges I've been given and being able to go to university and have that that um, really awesome support in my life. It was a real struggle that first year and I left engineering, which is very common. Um, and it disproportionately impacts um, more diverse students than it does um, the traditional students that you see in engineering. And so that was a battle. It was already an uphill battle. Coming back into it, finding my own voice, even now, um, the idea of imposter syndrome, that's still very much present. I feel I still struggle justifying who I am and what I do on a regular basis. You know, we can bring Indigenous people into the profession, but we're, if we're expecting them to practice in a Western way, to adhere to Western values, Western constructs, Western processes, at that point it's almost just like another form of cultural appropriation, and it's only valid within the Western construct. And I think it's really important that we're not just bringing these people in and expecting them to conform to, to the existing way it is, but really listening to, to what process, what path do you bring, what, what approach do you bring, and how can we, we walk down these different approaches together. Because really, when you think about the essence of science, you should be able to walk down different paths, use different approaches, different methodologies, and it should only lead you to a more rigorous result. I think it's important to be aware of what you bring into the profession, what, what privileges you've had, what experiences you've had. We talk about women in engineering, and we have to move beyond just talking about white women in engineering, straight women in engineering, able-bodied women in engineering, and kind of think beyond. Kind of ask yourself, what do you think of when you think of a woman in engineering? And is that is that excluding some people? Is that holding some people back? And um, thinking about your own your own assumptions when you think, oh, this is an indigenous engineer. What what does that mean to you? Indigeneity doesn't need to fit within Western ways, and um, it's its own complete and unique collection of worldviews and ways of being and doing things. So I think it's important that we respect it as such. And that's the pivot we need in our profession. Focus on experiences and the quality of experiences of people in engineering and less on the metrics of quantitative. I think it's quality of experience and inclusivity of thought and process. The goal is inclusivity in so many different ways that you can define it and in approach and in relationships and in exchanges. I think it's easy to get caught up in serving systems and serving a degree and sometimes the students are like you sacrifice it all for the degree and you just lay it all on the line and it consumes you and I think 
we kind of reframe that and think not about serving the system or serving the degree, but, but serving the people and serving the communities and, and serving ourselves and honoring our own experiences and our own truths. I think that can lead to a more healthy way of being for ourselves and for the communities we serve.